Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at the ES 44 ACs from Scale Trains. Now, we've taken a look at these before, so I don't want to be too repetitive. That's going to make this a product demo showing you the newest iteration of these, which is the BNSF 25th anniversary units. So, we'll take a look at these units and there's more ES44 ACs coming out this summer which I have just a ton on order so I really don't want to be repetitive with review after review so you guys will have the stats but um, in, from the original ES44 review but let's just see what you get in the box on these starting now This is the first item I'm getting from Scale Trains in their new rebranded boxes and it came with some stickers too. I don't know what I did with said stickers but uh, the brand is now Scale Trains. They've kind of dropped the .com from the, the main name and changed the logo a bit uh, from the traditional cross buck to kind of just a graphic of the cross buck. So I think it looks good. I've seen a, another manufacturer kind of change to a a white box. I don't know if there's some marketing trick behind that, but we got the foam and also the operator's manual here. So there's a trifold of the operator's manual. Then the locomotive itself is in a plastic blister. And we'll kind of zoom in for that a little bit as I slide this out. Roller bearing caps uh, tend to pop out, so they've been including some extras in there. Out pops the locomotive. And those truck immobilizers are always sneaky. Just kind of blending in. They get me every time. This time, I'm on my game. All right, locomotive's out of the box. Let's take a closer look on the track. Okay, as you can see, this is going to be more about the paint scheme than the locomotive, but we'll cover everything here. Uh, BNSF 25th anniversary on the side. This is number 6179. We also have number 5872 to show you. We'll do that when we uh, do some running here. All of the railroads that BNSF bought out are on the side here in a staggered formation. Uh, you have Burlington Route kind of tucked up against the step here, and then SPNS, or I'm sorry, no, Great Northern, um, Northern Pacific BNS or BN from the uh, BN part of BNSF and Santa Fe from the SF part of Santa of BNSF, Frisco, uh, Colorado, and Southern, and, and then SPNS, Spokane, Spokane, Portland, and Seattle. Man, I can't talk today, but uh, you get the point. Also, <clears throat> kind of a something that's different on these locomotives is this portion right here, which is just a raised fan for the radiator, I believe. And the radiator itself, it's like an exhaust fan. Um, then you have right here, kind of a low profile exhaust itself. And the horn, dynamic brake fan grills there. And we'll change up the angle, but you can also see the FRA striping along the side. ES44 is your designator right there. And then a ton of uh, side detail. And you've got the trucks with the rotating bear bearing caps, the truck chains, the fuel tank detail, and a lot of conduit running on the underside of the sill. On the front, you've got silver tipped end accessory hoses and brake line hose, scale trains, branded metal coupler, an MU hose, ditch lights above the anti climber, plastic handrails, coupler cut lever there. There's a cab nose door, windshield wipers, And of course the cab window sunshade. Taking a look from the top, you've got the antenna. I think they're planar antenna array. 
And then I believe this little unit here is either AC or more antenna, but there's conduit going behind it and a bunch of warning labels as well. This is a good angle to catch some of the compartment detail. You can see the compartment detail and the grating detail. Uh, See-through grating on the radiator fans as well. I'll show you more of that on the other side. Okay, here's like a track side view of the other side. You can see the see-through aspect of the radiator fan there, or the radiator grill there. So, just a really nicely detailed locomotive, top of its game for the industry, uh, for scale trains on these ES44s. Okay, let's go ahead and fire this up with um, ESU, which is what's inside of this. We're going to fire it up with F8. Alright, really bright ditch lights, headlight there too, we also have a side step light you can probably see right below the B in BNSF. As we move this along and go through some sounds you'll be able to see that better. There's also truck lighting, there's the bell, horn. does sound with the bell. So anytime you sound the horn, the bell is going to auto play with the horn for a few seconds afterwards. F3's coupler. F4 is dynamic brake when it's moving. We'll be able to hear just a little bit of that line there. Hard to hear over all the other sounds. F5 is DPU lights, which just shows the rear light when, um, when you're moving this, so you can turn that on at any time. That way, if it's in DPU mode, you're, push, you're going forward, it'll still light up that back light. F6 is the ditch lights. It says it's the ditch lights, there it is. <laughs> They fade in and out, which is nice. 8 is on and off. F9 is drive hold, which essentially just allows the locomotive to notch up the prime mover while you're still stationary and then letting go, hitting F9 again will release the locomotive to go to that speed step that you designated. Then there's just a lot of other sounds all the way up to F31. So you can assign functions and such when you're getting that high in the functions. But, like I said, this is mostly about paint scheme because we've gone over this in several reviews and we have another review this summer with a bunch of ES44 ACs, so just wanted to show you the locomotive. I'm now moving it at one speed step. Uh, it's going really slow, but it's lurching, so I'm going to go to two. What I've noticed with uh, locomotives is if you go too slow on the programming from the CVs, you get lurch. You know, very few drives are good enough to handle really slow speed control. So I've got to go till I don't get lurch anymore, and then I, I give them a speed test. You can see that light under the B on the side now for the walkway lighting. 
So I'm at three speed steps out of 126 or 128 on my NCE controller here. We're at three speed steps. We're now outside of lurch mode where it's not lurching anymore, maybe just a little. Extremely slow speed control as you can see. And this thing is going to read 1.4 scale miles an hour at three speed steps. So, you know, that's still very good speed control. So I don't mind that one is a little jerky. It just tells you you need to go to two or three. Almost all the track is laid on the layout. Both main lines are laid and most yards are laid. So I can run this at full speed and give you a top speed. 137 scale miles an hour. As the locomotive heads down towards us again, you can see the rear headlights, which would illuminate in DPU mode if you're going forward, or the headlight will illuminate in reverse. You can also see that walkway light, which there are walkway lights all around. So. Showing you a DPU mode here. Let's say this locomotive is shoving a consist. I've got it in reverse. Now I'm going to hit function 5. There it turns on the headlight even though it's going in reverse because it's the DPU. Also here the dynamic brakes a lot better. I had to hit 4 by accident there. My camera's focusing on but it sure isn't the locomotive at the moment but there you go uh, four is dynamic brakes five is the uh, DPU so you can see that headlight is illuminated there's a little night action because it's a little hard to see the number board lights and everything and then this walkway lights so there you have everything in the dark really nice number board lights uh, they were evenly lit do a quick pull test here. Really biting in. Look at 60 to 65 or 67 cars per locomotive, so not bad at all by any means. One of the better pull tests for a diesel locomotive. All right, we didn't talk about 5872, so let's do that now. As you can see, different antenna array on the top here. That's one difference in spotting features, one of many. I'm probably only going to catch a few. Uh, the different dynamic brake fan configuration here. It's another difference. And if you look back here, there's a difference here. That you don't have the pronounced, I think it's DB or something, um, on here. I think that's the ES44 DB. I could be wrong. Um, but anyway, uh, the. Uh, Fan grills different, the configuration's different back here. Those are some of the differences between the two. And I don't think, but we'll check if it has a different horn or anything. Okay, I got this one fired up. Sounds like there is a different horn config there. Maybe there's a different horn, I just didn't catch it on the other one. Got people coming over to operate on my layout in just a little bit, so I already boxed up one of these. But uh, sounds like a different horn, but we covered a lot of the different configurations there. Well, let's go ahead and wrap this video up. Uh, I think this is a, you know, like I said, top tier ES44 AC. And. 
they're pretty much at the top of the game for ES44 ACs and a lot of the hobby stuff in general. Um, but really nice details, no broken parts out of the box, smooth running, even at three speed steps, we're only at 1.4 scale miles an hour. Uh, beautiful print, beautiful details, uh, road name and number specific details, in this case road number specific details on the locomotive, all the underbody detail. Um, uh, you probably have a bad drinking game as many times as I say the word detail, but anyway, LED lighting, pretty reliable operations. Overall, it's a, it's a good model. Uh, this is a product demo. We didn't test everything to death, but I think it's a, a great model, and I hope you uh, pick them up if you're a BNSF modeler. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here on my channel. Take care.